Before we begin, sponsor mentions and some great supporters, everybody. Muck off. It is spring. You should be riding outside. Did I mention that you should also be taking care of your bike on the gritty roads and trails? Have you tried actually washing your bike on a regular basis? Hmm? Muck Off has all the tools and supplies needed for your to keep your steed shiny. Seriously, we here use what we talk about, and Muck Off makes sure it's all clean and dialed. Use our Lincoln Pack Filler, please. I'm going to say that a lot. Next off, Scratch Labs. Have you tried the bars? Have you tried the bars? The bars are brilliant. Uh, have you tried the chews? Scratch yes. isn't just about drink mixes. So much more to offer to fuel your races and rides. Don't wait until race day to try this stuff out. Use Scratch as your regular fueling option to ensure clean, healthy fuel that works for you mile after mile. Use the Lincoln Pack Filler. And finally, Competitive Cyclist. I don't mention these guys a whole lot just because I'll admit there's this, this internal struggle about things when it comes to online cycling and, and shopping and things like that. But trust us, use your LBS, but there are times and items that you may find the LBS just doesn't have or can't keep in stock or it's or it's high end and things like that and they your local shop just doesn't carry it. That's when Competitive Cyclist comes to the rescue. Find those high end or hard to find items and more Competitive Cyclist. Again, use our link please, I, I'm just, I know I'm saying that a lot, but that's actually what sends us a few pennies to keep us in beer and inner tubes. Do they inner tubes? God, I sound old when I said that. Lastly, be sure to check the Pack Filler Online Swag Store for all the great fun and ways to show off your love for the show. Okay, okay, thank you. Nobody's looking at me. They're all staring at their sheets, yeah. making picks for the races, and Sam's just trying to find USA after any rider. Yep. Still trying to pronounce the name. La Fleche? I think it was La Flesh. La Flesh Wallon. La Flesh Wallon. Flesh! I do that every year. This time. Flesh for fantasy! Let's play some bikes. Did you hear it? It's just in the distance. It's the end of the spring classics is approaching, and we are here not only to rejoice the season that was, to attempt but to attempt to prepare for stage racing to dominate our brains and daily lives. That's almost like a moment of silence, because I like stage racing. It's just not classics. There's just not that... Okay. It's also time for the longest-running cycling podcast out there. This is the Pack Filler Cycling Podcast. We are live in the Rim Break Bar, and I am your host, Pat Bulger. Let's meet the panel of pundits for tonight's prologue. Panel of pundits for the prologue. Gentlemen, let's say it was your birthday in the next week or two. Just hypothetically, of course. Um, <laughs> what cycling item would you ask for a gift that you think would be a reasonable ask and an expectation? Reasonable ask and expectation. This is going to show us, first of all, what you would ask for. Second of all, what kind of price range you would ask for from your close family and friends. You good? I'm talking about from family and friends, not from like... Not just your sugar mama or something. What if that is your <laughs> wife, though? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. Tell me how you did that. First off, he's the proud owner of a new pair of shiny shoes, Mr. Paul Maine. How are you, man? Yeah, yeah. Wait, shiny bike, shoes. Bike shoes? Shiny bike, bike shoes. Bike shoes. Yeah. yeah. You went black. Yeah, because the, the only ones, it was on sale. Oh. And that was the only color they had. It was going to go with the white pair, but they... They had, of course, the half size yeah. on each end. So oh. With the black. Yeah. So what color socks do you wear with those? Black. Yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. You don't wear white socks with black shoes? Nope. No. Is that a rule? No. That's Yeah, dark dark with dark shoes. I feel like with white shoes, you can almost get away with it, but you should still stick to a lighter scheme with whiter shoes, too. David would agree with you that Peter Sagan wore black, so uh, black shoes and white socks. Yeah, totally. I knew that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sounds right. Peter Sagan did a lot of things, though. Not shave his legs. It's yeah, like, win three worlds in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So David had heart problems. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. hey. Huh, now. too close to home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul, if you had a birthday gift that you were uh, planning on asking somebody for, what would it be, and how much would it cost you? Just estimate. I already bought it. Oh, your shoes? No. Uh, that's too personal. 
<laughs> I got that silk uh, uh, chain wax. Oh, yeah, with the with the strip chip and no nice shit. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So th- those are about a hundred bucks, and then all the wax, and I think it came with wax and the zips. I mean the strip chips. I think it came to about one hundred sixty bucks. So that and that was you bought that for yourself. Yeah. But you know that's what I would ask. Oh, okay, okay. It, okay. And okay. I, that's okay. what I would ask. But gotcha. I already have it. And if I'm going for something that I, I don't have or w- would need, I'd probably go. I'd like several rolls of the um, physique partake that I use. Okay, what's that a roll? A simple, it's like that- thirty plus, at least the the style I I like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about 35 bucks, maybe 40 bucks. I was just oh. saying that the other day. I had some SuperCast stuff, and I was pulling it so tight that I tore it. It doesn't oh. really stretch that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, apparently not. Yeah. And so I I still kind of jury-rigged my way around, but it's starting to come apart now, and I'm like, this is a $50 roll of tape. Hmm. Next off, he's uh, got the worst text timing of anyone I know, <laughs> Mr. Sam Waples. <laughs> That's me. You were telling me if I even text you back. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, your brother. Actually, you're both really shitty at that. Yeah, yes. I don't like. Honestly, if you want to get a hold of me, you should probably just call me or show up at my doorstep or the clinic. Really? Yeah, just go to the clinic. Go to the clinic. Yeah. Well, I, that's the funny thing is, is he texted <laughs> me that he might have to miss some shows in the upcoming future, and I could tell he was just so apologetic in the text. And and then I I get the text and I look up and Sam is like eight feet away from me, and you're just like, oh, you're here. <laughs> it's just like sending a breakup text. I was just that's gonna just, say exactly what it is because yeah. yeah. he just already established that he doesn't like to text. He'd yeah. rather have it in the front door. Yeah. But of course he uses it to say, <laughs> "I divorce you, I hate you, and throw poo poo on your shoe." Yes. That's what he basically. That is- <laughs> Standing right in front of there. Oh, oh that was bad timing. Damn it. So I walked over to you, and I, I don't know if you, you did, you kind of followed through on my rules. I said, okay, and you were like, I'm sorry. And you were looking down. I said, so okay, stay looking down, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause, and I want you to slowly lift your head up, look me in the eye, and mouth the words, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I really was, want to live my life as a lifetime drama. It was such perfect timing. Perfect. I just I walk out and I'm like, oh. and the text was just bullshit. You know, I was just like, I know how much you put into the show. And, you know, <laughs> See, there we go. Oh, I'm so it's sorry. It's not you. It's yeah. me. It's me. Yeah, my wife is just requiring so much of me and my house, and it's just like. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you want to come drink beer or not, fucker? <laughs> As if this show doesn't go on without me. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good We're addition. All part yeah. of the island, man. Oh, yeah. yeah so uh, it, let's say it was your But birthday. his wife just voted yeah. him off the island. She I did guess. just, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Got it. Birthday yeah, prison. Blame it on her. Uh, birthday so uh, I would say I'm always down for a new pair of shoes or helmet. Oh, is, yeah. Okay, you're yeah. you're up the price a little mm-hmm. bit. You're around three hundred buck range. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean it's my birthday. Yeah, it's a national holiday. Right. Yeah. Do you do the week birthday week? No, or do you do birthday day. Yeah, birthday day. But our family and I think this is just my dad wanting to prolong leave me alone children. Yeah, day. Dad for gets him. birthday week. Dad got birthday and he brought it in. It was like everybody then started getting it, but it was twenty four hours like or. Before and after. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Or sorry, twelve hours. Because so noon, the, oh. yeah, noon the day before and noon the day after. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that and it was basically just a way. Of, it's my birthday. Leave me alone. Yeah, I'm kind of cool with that. <laughs> Next off, he's got mental and physical scars from the weekend. Mr. David Waples. Yes. Um, yes. We'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. You, you seem okay. I'm okay. I'm, today's a lot better than yesterday. Really? Oh yeah. Things are starting to like the fog's lifting. Yeah, the yeah. fog's really, lifting. Right. I'm coming back to life. So yeah. okay. I mean, you did text us later instead of later. I yeah, don't even, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we Doctor Hill, con- yourself. Yeah, we need to do a concussion <laughs> yeah. screaming yeah. on him. Currently seeing patients. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so, uh, birthday. Uh, you know, it did, I that's why I asked who it's from because if it was just a, I was okay. asking to the, like family or something, I'd probably just ask for like a pair of tires or bar tape. 
but you know, if I'm asking my wife, I'm probably, uh, you know, I really want a new mountain bike by chance if she's listening. Hello. Yeah, you know, I was like, you know, I mean, go big. They're a doctor. Yeah, yeah so, you know, we got. I want, I want a Tesla for a birthday. Yeah, I just want a little Tesla, Daniel. <laughs> it's one of the Tesla. It's no, not a big deal. Much, Come pretty, on. Pretty much, it's the you know new bike days are coming along, and then we just attach them to things. You know, it's like oh well, I was gonna get a new bike anyways. Might as well make it a birthday present. It's like a line item thing. Oh, yeah. oh, you were oh, okay. You just it just so happened to be arriving. Like you could have easily made your your new bike. Uh, you, you know, your wife could have attached that to something, and two birds with one stone. You get a new bike. She doesn't have to buy you something for a holiday. That's true. Yeah. But I'm paying for it. Smart. I pay for it though. Yeah, well, I don't know, my money. Both you still win. No, I I paid for it out of my side income, my side hustles. Mm. Nice. Um, I'm I'm saving you, okay, for an important reason. Okay. Me personally, I've got I've got. <laughs> I was like, I was like, he's got, he's got, he's got. And me's like, I've got. Me's got so many reasons to be joyful, but we'll probably forget them in the. Sea of self doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that about myself. I'm Bat Bulger, and I would like to. I would actually. Uh, I would ask my family for for cycling shoes. I, I my road shoes are getting a little little scuffed, mm. and uh, scuffed. Look at this high demand bitch. Um, but my mountain bike shoes are still are pretty old. I, I rode Leadville in them in 2016, so wow. they're 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 getting up there. So yeah. you've, you've used them so much. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> no. Not since COVID, to be yeah. honest. I yeah. haven't used them a lot. So Boa so or laces? Uh, boa. Yeah. They are lace now. Yeah. But I would like boas. Yeah. Just I just mm-hmm. after yeah. trying that out, it's like game changer. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh finally. Here where it comes. is it? Where is it? Here it comes. He got his first W of the season. <laughs> oh, it's Mr. Jack. And, oh, uh, yeah, that's it. He's got his first win of the season, Mr. Jackson Bolter. How are you, man? Good. Thanks. We're going to get into detail on the on the ride here. But, yeah, I've uh, got them all. If you were happen to mm-hmm. have a birthday coming up in... Um, in 11 days. 11 days. That'd be just crazy. Just picking a random number. That'd be yeah, crazy. Um... Well, if it were to be in 11 days, I'd probably ask for uh, some Oakley Kato's. Oh! Yeah. Uh, for those. Klee. What? I said, oh, Oakley. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really want a new pair of cycling glasses this year. I have never worn Oakley's before. Hmm. So I'm interested to maybe try them out, hopefully. <laughs> Um, other than that, though, maybe like a new training kit, too. And for those of us who don't know, those are the ones who they go, they over, go the over the ridge, over the ridge of the nose. The glass? Yeah, yeah. the glass itself goes over the ridge of the nose. Oh, very controversial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a budding consensus? Uh, I would defer to him. I'm getting used to it, but I, I'm not a fan. I, He's I, the stuff. I, I, I would probably those use those when I was building bikes. You know, they look like shop glasses. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I like them. I think yeah. they're just yeah. like I think they're like a pair of glasses that I've never really seen before. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I really I enjoy them. I mean, that's all that really matters because I wear glasses that people are like those are stupid. What do you wear? I have Smiths. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are stupid. Yeah, and then I also have the Oakley Sutro, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just people are opinionated about glasses. Like I would never wear Rudy Project. But what? Yeah, really? right. See, I know anymore yeah. though. It's yeah. kind of a rough choice. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with him. I'm gonna have to look uh, up Rudy Parker. Uh, those uh, ones that you know, the uh, why do I keep? I can't um, the throw them away. The ones that we have all have Gooder. a bunch of Gooder. 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 Yeah. You know, that they were all, a sponsor of this podcast yeah. for like six years. <laughs> well, Be very careful. Well, I can't remember You're them. Trying to dead no longer a sponsor, but you know, <laughs> I, they're nice. dead to me. Yeah, they're dead to me. I enjoyed <laughs> them, but I also thought they looked really douchey, and that's why I liked mm. them. Yeah, they're like super bright colors. They <laughs> oh, were yeah. huge, yeah. like. But I, I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah. No, I, that's oh. what I would go for. Bold. Yeah. I think that the the marketing yeah. term for that would be they were bold. Bold. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. not that douchey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. What well, word would you douchey. use to describe Oakleys? 
Well, they don't sponsor the show, so you know what? They look I have like never. Shit. I will no. I I will honestly. I will never. Uh, Oakley were the pioneer of of yeah. cycling eyewear outside of gargoyle, which I rode before then. And you 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 guys can look at me blankly and not know what the fuck gargoyle. No is. idea. No idea. Uh, think original Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. They yeah. were the coolest glasses in the world. Those are the best, right yeah, there. Yeah, the, the mountaineering ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are flight goggles. Goggles yeah. and a retro <laughs> picture in the background. But uh, or Bernardino with his aviators. Oh yeah. But, uh, oh yeah. But I. Um, I will not bash Oakley. Oakley's they're innovators, man. They're ahead mm-hmm. of the game. They they have been ahead of the game since day one. And if and Oakley's t- hearing this right now, and yeah, wants to get a share of the pie. Yeah, we're not going to say no. Talk to us. Talk to me. <laughs> yeah, Patrick at backfielder dot com. Um, <laughs> no, they're, they I've always they have always been ahead of the game, and they've always been really high quality eyewear. And my father has always said, never skimp on shoes or eyewear. And he's right, um, you know, because that's number one, contact with the ground. Number two, and your feet are so important. And number two, your eyes, man. How many times? How many times have you guys had a rock or something or a bug bounce off your glasses? You, you know, should like, definitely ooh. wear glasses. Paul doesn't. Mm. Like, I've only had one of all these years. I've only had one thing hit me in the eye. Yeah, you know who's in the crib? It was a chunk of asphalt, and I yeah, caught you, it. And I you, you did pop eye for a while. You spit it, it out. It yeah. takes <clears throat> to like lose eyesight with an accident. I know. One time. Yeah. 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 I'm quite He's, aware of it, but I don't. I I'm not comfortable. They sweat. They they get. Yeah, I end up taking oh. them off anyway because you can't see through the dang. I things. get sweat on them horribly. I'm not. Yeah, that's lie. terrible. Yeah. He's relying on his natural reflexes. That's right. Yeah. Now they're getting pretty slow. Which yeah. I better start through the I, glasses. Look, here comes the rock speed, and this is this is. <gasps> <laughs> huh? What? There was a rock. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the back of his skull by the time he's. <laughs> sure, I look at it this Why way. Why can't I feel the right side of my body? <laughs> Yeah, because you're stroking out. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Jackson, talk to us. First W of the season for, for the team. Mm-hmm. Um, how does it feel the years to, to start the year off right? It feels really good. Yeah. It was it was really fun. I will also say it was definitely not a Jackson win. It was a very much a Rive win. Oh, you're I know I'm adorable. I know it sounds cheesy and cute, but it really was. Without God, such without a team player. Well, without what? the team, I was not going to be at the at, at at the front of that. Was it something you were? Uh, did you show up at that line going, "This is my bitch," or was it a little bit of surprise in terms of your form? Because the the first race of the year is always just like going. No, but you have no clue of anybody's hand, what they're holding in their hand in terms of their cards, in terms of their fitness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I always get freaked out because I look at just people' legs definition, people's leg definition. I'm like, oh my god, I'm fucked. There, that guy looks so fast, and then you never see him again. Yeah, or he's the guy with a you know sign pointing you where to start is. Um, but did you? Was this something that you were surprised by? Um. You know, I think I went up just with uh, confidence, but not pressure. I kind of just hoped I'd do well, but um, I knew my form. I know my fitness at this point of the year, yeah. um, and I know that I've been riding a lot. But um, cycling is one of those sports where you can be the strongest in the pack, and you also don't win. Yeah, yeah. So I was just expecting, uh, hoping for the best expecting you know whatever happened okay yeah can no ask you, a question? you can how nervous were you and david and i are rolling up like 10 minutes before the start if that you guys are so bad at okay that shit. i we know we made it and we made it <laughs> I was, we're riding out there because i get off at five and the race was at six and i'm like either i drive out there and i have no time to like you know warm up or I'm on my bike and we are sprinting out there and we're rolling up to the start line. And I was like, well, let's do that. You rode? Yeah. To the start. Yeah. Time trial to the start. <laughs> so th- that was like, I know. And I was riding down and I'm like, Jackson's for sure got poo poo in his pants right now. <laughs> and I'm looking down and it's like 550 and he's probably just like, sons of bitches. <laughs> did you eat? Did you, was that on your mind? 
I was like, oh, I wonder when they're coming. And then I saw Kenzie come, and I was like, oh, like they'll be here in a We're few good. minutes. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't too worried about it. I knew you guys would be there. Yeah. When I called you an hour beforehand to find out what time the race was at, um, I was I was just in my bedroom at home. I was there. <laughs> I know. I you were, you're like, I'm rolling up, and I was like, oh god, I better put my kid on and start <laughs> roll, riding out there. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I wasn't, it, it wasn't too. It wasn't too stressful. <laughs> I figured you I guys would come. He kept it together. Of, yeah. Visual of David lying on his back in his bed with his phone above his head like a teenage girl. You know, the curtains, the wind's blowing through the curtains. It's like, hey, saying? thinking of you, what's up? <laughs> race, race starts in an hour, asshole. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Better go. <laughs> I was just curious. No, yeah. I, I figured you guys would be there. I was really, really happy you were there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. really happy about it. Well, you guys, I mean, I don't want to, we can't obviously reveal tactical implementation mm-hmm. because, you know, we don't want to uh, reveal the cards None for the that. next race. But uh, did everything, well, obviously everything went kind of according to plan. But what? talk to me about what's missing in terms of how you, all three who raced, Paul and I were not racing. Uh, let how do you guys feel in terms of how how you raced and where you sit, Jackson? We'll start with you. Um, I mean, I know myself. I'm still like pretty newish to this whole thing, so there were times where Sam would, you know, kind of talk talk to me about like just when to place myself in certain positions, which was really great. And that's another reason why I say without the team, there was no me at the front. Um, <clears throat> and I will also say, though, in that sense, this is the first time that I've really noticed that it. this one felt like we have just all ridden together for a long time now. It felt like we didn't really need to talk to each other. It felt like we just meshed really well. And when we did need to talk to each other, there was no, like, we didn't hesitate. We were very comfortable in, like, telling one another where we needed to be when we needed to be there. I mean, Sam talked. Sam was talking to me. I talked to David. All that stuff. So it was... This one cool. felt good. But David and Sam never talked to each other. No. Oh, no. <laughs> More than an occasion. Oh, there was a few swear words. <laughs> Side Sam, eye. Sam always Fuck tries you. to say shit to me, and I just roll my eyes. I'm like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing back there? <laughs> I will yeah. never forget you guys screaming at each other. And, and I was not and, screaming. And, no, he was screaming. He was screaming <laughs> at him at at, at, at Missoula. Yeah, uh, Sam, how you feel? How how are things? That was a redeeming ride because, as we all know, the weekend before was a low point in my life. Yeah, not even yeah. Just mm-hmm. <laughs> bikes, but in general, I thought I was just worthless <laughs> when it came to fitness because I got absolutely cracked. <laughs> and turns out my fitness wasn't so bad. It was other issues but uh so i was yeah able to go out and um do exactly what we had planned on and that went really well the only thing that i think didn't like go to exact what we had planned was i was thinking okay i'm, I'm really tired here at the end um, from covering multiple moves and david i'm like oh, david you got it you got this you have to pull jackson to the finish <clears throat> and then david had done a big effort too but all of a sudden on the last lap, I just see David going backwards. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I guess I'm up. And I went, <laughs> surfed my way back <laughs> up to the front of the group, did one last hero pole, and was like, good luck, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Tell my story! <laughs> that was exactly it. I mean, <laughs> as a parachute went off, and I just went, whew, yeah, yeah. Out the back. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, the efforts were. Uh, like the you know the way above threshold efforts, I could feel those. Yeah, definitely uh, took a toll. I mean, I didn't even feel good from the start, and definitely died early. So you know, for the next one, I would ex- would hope I had more energy at the end, but it, I died. Like, yeah, but you I were was, in a bad way. Also, the whole way out, you were saying like, I really don't oh, feel good. good. I went to chase. I just this. got out of bed. Yeah, yeah. I, out of bed, bed. yeah. <laughs> I went to chase that last move, and I'm chasing him, and I'm just like, I'm sitting there, and I'm just like fuck i can't do this like i know i can't it's not even close (laughs) you bridged for a little bit uh yeah and then the gap were those your pictures that you took yeah where he's in the chicane area 
Doing the puppy paws. Yeah. Yeah, it was puppy paws. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, did paws. I catch yeah. you with puppy paws? Yeah, you got a good... <gasps> you, we, I saw you yeah. take that photo, and I was like, I thought it was going to look cooler, honestly, because we were ripping at that point. Yeah. We were going really See, fast. still photos take away speed, just yeah, to let you did. know it's still yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> operative word there. It didn't look very cool, and they, but I, yeah, I puppy paws. And they take away 20 pounds. Yeah, can you add, like, the blurry <laughs> lines <laughs> next time? Do you want me to do that? Yeah, yeah, I'll, like I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll go. Yeah. At the yeah. sound. Pew, 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 pew. David, you spent some time in the dirt. Mm. Uh, I, first of all, I I, I, I kind of came up with an idea for, for the podcast here. And, and, and what I'd like to do is I'd like you to tell me about the event itself, at the the race, the course, the venue, the organization. It's from a series called the, which Paul would love, called the Dirt Abides. Got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and they're doing a series of mountain bike races around the, around Washington. And um, I, the, this was their first. This was the gig first of the one, year. Yeah, this is the first one of the year. And there's many more to come. Um, the guy who runs it looks like. The, the big dude. The dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I was like, uh, this is this suits. Yeah. This, this, this follows suit. This is great. Uh, it was um, out in Quincy, Washington, or Great Lakes, Washington, which is near Quincy. It was just like a. Um, they had multiple categories all the way from novice, which my wife raced up to um, like an expert men um, open or whatever. Um, and it was like a 22 mile course at first. I was like thinking, man, I wish it was a little bit longer. You always forget that mountain bikes go a little slower. 22 is a long course. (laughs) That turns out to be quite a long ride. (laughs) And, uh, uh, for which I underestimated water need. Um, <laughs> cause 20 on the road is a lot quicker, mm. but anyways, uh, so your brother wasn't there to help you lay out all your nutrition. And yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but it was good. It was a, you know, group start fun course, a lot of single track. Those trails are actually super fun. I've never ridden out there. Um, it was very well organized. They had, um, you know, like timing chips and numbers, which I actually, that's a pet peeve. Why the hell do we have both? Just saying pick one. Mm-hmm. Um, because the timing chips sometimes fail. Okay. Did Fair you have enough. to wear one on your ankle? No, it, you, you tie it under your helmet. I hate those ones because they, they tear off. The, if you yeah, have a matte helmet, then goo. it tears off the matte goo. finish. You yeah. leave sticker goo. That's I'll give you that. Yeah. 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 So, but it overall very smooth. They had food for you afterwards. Um, Ranye, there was free Ranye. What's Ranye? Ramen. No, Rainier beer. Oh. oh. <laughs> Free Rainier? Yeah, they had a cooler full of Rainier afterwards. Dude. It was great. Mm-hmm. With, with a barbecue. Well, um, overall, great so time. Like, like this, is, <laughs> <laughs> this, I think, is why Mountain does so well, is it's such a great community. There was Danielle made, like, two new friends. You know, it's great. Like, her and I are going to go to these events together because she has fun and I have fun. Can't say that for an SCR race. I haven't made <laughs> I haven't made two new friends since you two came on the podcast. That so was a while ago, yeah. <sighs> well, oh. you're you're dead to me now. Oh, oh. <laughs> fucking text. <laughs> um, if 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 you had to give it a uh, a, a ranking, a, a a grade, the race itself, what would you what would you give it? I think I'd probably give it like. Like I, I would give it uh, probably like a an eight. I think it eight was ten? still okay. Yeah, I think it was still. Oh, I, I don't know if this is off base or not. Still a bit expensive for, you know, an hour and a half mountain bike race. It was the price. It what was, was price? Danielle and I together paid one hundred and eighty bucks for two okay. two <laughs> entries. That's a, that's yeah, I didn't, ninety each. Yeah, to be yeah. fair, um, I didn't. We didn't know if we could make it, so we had to do day of that out of okay. twenty bucks. Well, that's gonna add. Yeah, and that's fair. You twenty know, bucks each. Mm-hmm. No, no, together it's okay. ten, ten bucks okay. each extra, and that's totally fair. If I, I think that's why we need day of registration is for people who don't know if they can make it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of expensive for a an hour and a half long race. But again, very well organized. I love that they like sorted it out so that they gave like preference to the fast people to start first. The course oh, was actually cool. really good. Um, and very well marked. Well marked. Yeah, yep, okay. All that. So they uh they also offered a season pass at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Which if if I'd have thought ahead, that's something I would have probably jumped on. Yep. You know, because even if... Am you, I even supposed to be on this show? You because will be. You will shit. be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will put this out there. Race promoters, I am happy to include a segment just like we just did on, on the show promoting your events. Now, 
we might say, you know, yeah, your prices are a little high and things like that. But I, I think an honest review of races is, is, first of all, something that's important. And second of all, it's also uh, something that can, we need to pr- help promote the sport and we need to get these things out there. So uh, race promoters or people who know race promoters, um, email me with your information, with the dates, the location, and other information like that to Patrick at packfiller.com and I will start putting the word out. Uh, Paul! You got back on your bike mm-hmm. after two weeks. Mm-hmm. How 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 are things feeling? Like I was off the bike for two weeks. Oh, this yeah. is such bullshit <laughs> because we went up Pettit. Mm. Uh, Jackson uh, can t- attest to this. We went up Pettit, which is how long is Pettit? Seven percent, maybe. Yeah. For no, it's not seven. I bet you it's five. It's five or six. Yeah, maybe so, even five, four and a half. I bet. Oh, don't. It is not diminish. That speed, no. Well, okay, it's your it's your show. Go it's, ahead and make up the shit. Seven no. to points. <laughs> <laughs> but but we got to that climb. Uh, how many meters? Is it a kilometer? It's probably close to a kilometer. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, fresh off my my major reconstructive <laughs> surgery, and uh, <laughs> and um. <laughs> And you were at the front just kind of going, you're so quiet the way you put your effort down. But I, I was doing 400 watts up that climb. I was just... It, the whole So way. that was Sunday, and that was... All I was doing is trying to do big gear efforts. So if you look at all the hills, I was just like low cadence, heavy gear. And so I stood up that whole run, yeah, climb. Yeah, you That's did. That's all I was doing. Was it tiresome? Yeah. That's why I know I'm out of shape. Okay, could you... Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's tiresome. Could you maybe call out at some point in time, like give me a signal, like maybe stick out your middle finger on your on your <laughs> left brake lever or something like that when you're like going, I'm going hard now. I, I'm actually feeling pain or something like that. Because I don't know anymore. It's the low cadence. What? It yeah. really muddies the water. You can't tell that he's like all of a sudden. No, I can never tell when Paul's yeah. hurting. Until... It, it it unless his eyes sink into his head. <laughs> or he's, or or he's cramping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm cramping. Oh, he yeah, must be hurting. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're upcoming with the... with the, week Weeknight racing is such a, a blessing to curse to the mm-hmm. sport. But um, your Thursdays are hit and miss. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so I have grandkids. And so every Wednesday I have my grandsons, my wife and I, I shouldn't say just me, Primarily, my wife has the grandkids. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and then every other Thursday, I have my granddaughter. And then the other Thursdays, my wife goes to work. So there's potential to go on those Thursdays. It just has to line up. Mm-hmm. But so. we're on the cycle of every other for these races. So yeah, there's so, not a race this week. There is, yeah. So it's going to work out because she just got off. And and then plus she's going to Norway. Um so I'm not going to have the granddaughter because I just don't do good with little kids, You're let bad alone with girls. a little girl. It's yeah. like, mm. you want to play T? Why in the fuck do I want to play T for? <laughs> you want to talk about you know? bikes or not? Yeah. Do you want to yeah. yeah. wax? Yeah. Bikes you want to drink a shitload yeah. of beer? Hey, yeah. watch, watch Grandpa or Opa get drunk. <laughs> yeah. This will be a blast. <laughs> hey, son, come pick up your daughter. No, <laughs> teach her the ways of Lada Capecchi. What's that? <laughs> a lot of Capecchi. I and, know. And, and 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 waxing chains. Watch this. Yeah. And you want to wax chains? Yeah. yeah. She she's a girly yeah. girl. Oh. She likes. Yeah. I mean, right now she's going to be ten in November, so she likes all the, you know. Now she's doing a little safe uh, selfies and that okay. type of thing, and it's all like, right. okay, you lost me. <laughs> it's a lot Jesus easier. Than that. So anyway, yeah, they are. The, it, it could That's be funny. tough. Hit and miss. Yeah, on the, on the Thursday. Okay, you better show up because I need I want somebody. To, I, want to. I need another old I fart. I love racing. I need another That's guy who farts dust. Be able to no. race with me. Let's get to the news, you guys. Um, brought to us by Benedito's Pizza, who is going to be supplying us with beer starting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Big thanks. Yeah. Big thanks to the friends at Benedito's. I just pulled that out of my ass. But uh, Paul just lined that up for it and I'm really glad that they're going to be our, our helping us out with some 
their brew lubrication of, mm-hmm. of their in-house brew and that should be great uh first story mm-hmm. casting caskets the publication of the new images of the spectator who threw the cap and matthew vanderpool oh, yeah as the world champion rode towards Perry Roubaix victory, has revived speculation that her action may have been intentional, something she, in fact, claims and has categorically denied. Who's, who saw that? Who saw the footage? I saw both. Have oh, you yeah, seen okay. both footage? Yeah, just I, there's all, two. Oh, all I saw was one, and it looked. There's a legit. new one where where they're in front of Matthew, yeah. and you can see her. Her whole hand, yeah, it's, yeah. You can, it's well, obvious. But she's she, a Matthew, Matthew Van, Vanderpool fan, by the way. She, well, why yeah, would she, she do that? Claim? She wanted a signature. I don't know. While he was, while he was, yeah, putting down. One Who was it that threw it? It is a, a lady, woman spectator. Older lady. In an interview with Het Last News last week, the lawyer representing the spectator responsible said she denied it was in any way a malicious in action and that she was a fan of Interpol. However, another video obtained, this is the one you're talking yeah, about, Paul, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and published by Het Last News, showing the same incident from a different angle has raised fresh questions. Spectator said through her lawyer last week it was not done on purpose. Bullshit! <laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. It was clearly never my client's intention, this is a quote from the lawyer, to harm the writer in question, let alone that she wanted to bring him down. No right-thinking person (laughs) would... uh, Sorry, I'm supposed to be fair and balanced, right? (laughs) Would do something like that, right? (laughs) As if common sense was common. She has been in touch with the trade union to discuss the incident, but was not willing to go through the media. The cap toss was not an isolated incident at Perry Rubin. From what I understand, later in the race, Vanderpool reportedly was doused with beer as he had been on the Outquermont during Tour de Flanders victory. Tour de Flanders, sorry, victory the previous week. Um, well, it's yeah, kind of, I don't I mean, where's the, the whole, problem? There? The whole mountain is yeah. flowing yeah. with Outquermont beer, right? <laughs> How do you, you gotta, know between the slobbering drunk yeah. Belgians going cool and you're spitting <laughs> on him? <laughs> Best beer, yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. yeah, at that point, you got to expect it a little. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. first question was though the intentionality of the cap toss, and I think we're all like, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? She meant it. shame. Um, but this kind of behavior isn't really new. Of spectators doing yeah. this kind of stuff, yeah. I just think of the. Uh, was it Cadell Evans when they threw the tax the out? Tax. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Um, just oh, I, they douse water on them all the time. Beer now, me- urine, urine. Yeah, Lance Vander- had reports of, of urine. Yeah. Yeah. Vanderpool's and urine. From, yeah. yeah, kidney Vanderpool's, punch on Mercs. Kidney yeah, kidney punch. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Vanderpool spitting on people now. It's just a thing. And it's there was a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was. Uh, I remember there were reports of. Uh, I mean, back in the early '80s when I first started kind of being a fan of bike racing, that if a spectator hands you a bottle of water, you never drink it. Mm-hmm. You always just pour it over your mm-hmm. head because you don't know what's Learned in that, that the bottle. hard way. Oh Jesus Christ! Took a hand up in a cross race. Turns out it was fireball. Oh, oh that's nice. Well, that's a dub. Yeah. Oh. Come on, that's chapter five of the book of duh. <laughs> if, if You're at a cross race, so would yeah. they have water? I'm no, like, they just have I'm alcohol. I'm on my limit following lead guys, which I was like pretty stoked to be in that position because I'm a terrible cross racer. And some guy is like, oh, here. And I'm like, thank God, liquid, right? And I just go whoop down the hatch. <laughs> that's... That's gasoline. You should have. You should have won that race. <laughs> you deserved that, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> All right, sorry. Keep going. <laughs> well, I, I, was, I was wondering personally. It was like going here, water hand up, and it's like, wow, they're handing water in small glasses. <laughs> it wasn't that small shot though. Glasses. That's and the it's, thing. Is it and it's kind of yellow yeah, and yeah, syrupy. It's weird. Weird. <laughs> it wasn't a small glass. <laughs> That's part of the problem too. <laughs> the big four. You took a big oh, just bell down the hatch. Oh my god! You got cheered, I bet. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. legend. Could yeah. this change? <laughs> are we entering an era where I mean, Paul? We talk about you talk about the beauty of of cycling in that the fact that it is approachable to the spectators. Mm-hmm. Are we approaching eventually some form of? barricades of of changing the sport jackson's nodding his head no. sam nodded his head well i shook my head shook his head sorry yes. shook your head sorry i got my mm. i i believe shakes. i believe that like the one person's gonna ruin it for all of us you think so? like i think that the sport is is inevitably all of a sudden it's gonna be roped off for miles and they're gonna be right, right? way better about 
policing and pushing everybody back, and then it's going to be disappointing. <clears throat> it's like, well, you guys did this. Paul, please shut him down. No, I don't. I don't think so. That because that's the uniqueness of the sport, and it's unfortunate. But I think that people are going to have to start leaning on. You see somebody do that, you know, and speak up. It's like we're going to grab, and they're going to have to start using people as an example. You know what I mean? And this the fact lady that this woman take, was caught, and the yeah. fact that this woman and has she's been she's trying to lie through it. You yeah, know? yeah. And the, and same with the you know people throwing urine and beer. If you're a person that just wants to have, like you know, your experience of having your athletes like five feet, two feet in front of you, yeah, and watch a sport. No other sport provides that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're gonna fuck it up. So we all have to start police and say, just grab them by the collar, pin them down, call the cops. This is the dude. Yeah. You're going to start just, we got to take it in our own. Well, you know. and, and we, we think about to even the time of an unintentional with the Ale Opi Omi. Yeah. That's just going to happen because of that. But, but they, I will say they handled that in a way where I think they did really make an example of that person. And I think that's what's going to continue to happen. Yeah. Is just, they call out, hey, don't do this for recognition purposes. And then they're not going to be allowed back or they're yeah. going to be looked at as oh you're the person who made that sign and crashed out the entire Yumbo Visma team yeah. so I, yeah. I, I think that'll be a big deal I think that there'll be probably a lot more police officers around now um, but I don't think they'll ever I don't think they'll ever take it off or, or, or bury, bury it off just because I think that's that's too much to ask from mm-hmm. a race director to do that the and expense. then the next night mm-hmm. do it again all over and over and over i think it's just too much they can't handle that and cycling let's be real is it the money is it like the richest sport like no. it's got yeah. it's got the middle east but yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> to, to what extent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll add to that Dan- when uh danielle watched uh flanders and paris bay with me for the first time and she was like in awe at like the fact that they're surrounding the riders, the yeah. front riders breaking through the crowds and you have flags from like every country in Europe flying. Like mm-hmm. to her, she watched that and she was like, this is, she was addicted. Like she, she was the one we were watching highlights and she wanted to go back and watch more because of that. So you can't, I, you can't, that would be a huge loss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If yeah. they take that away, if they put everybody behind barriers where you can't see that interaction, mm-hmm. it's going to be a bummer. And think about uh, we're entering Grand Tour time where you have these mountaintop, you know, not even mountaintop, the mountains where they're where they're going over, where the spectators are so close. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I personally have never experienced that that claustrophobic nation, uh, notion of being able to of just pedaling and just hoping that it opens the seas front. part. Yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I just and and how do you keep going all out at full max? When you don't know where the spectators end and the road ends, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. Just, the, probably the but best. It's such example, a beautiful part of the sport. Yeah, the best example of that was in '91. If you guys look it up, it was Sestriere and it was uh, Claudio Chiapucci, and he was on a long, like this massive break going up uh, Sestriere. He didn't even know where the road was. It was just because it's right on that Italian. So the yeah. Italians are out there. Tifosi are crazy, and and he's like trying to wave his hand it's just a sea of people and he was just like trying to navigate yeah. where that because they knew where the road was and they're breaking up it was insane and that but you can go gives you full gas you know? yeah and yeah. they're getting out of the way right uh, no other sport gives you that yeah. i guess you gotta just aim for the middle right <laughs> yeah just yeah. where they yeah. where they part that's where you yeah, go yeah exactly and hope right. somebody hasn't had too many saint bernardus you know <laughs> oh they all have <laughs> it's just but they're, they're, they're not going to get out of the way it slows reaction time mm-hmm. yeah isn't there's that, always a couple that isn't are, that a weird interaction though between like the athlete and the the people watching it that you like you rely on the fact that they're not going to like separate in a way that leads you off a cliff because yeah. <laughs> they could yeah. right yeah. like there's a weird interaction yeah. there <laughs> As you're <laughs> I met you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank gotcha. <bye. laughs> Talk about tradition, though. Like, that is something that has gone on for years and years and years and years. And it's just now become something where it's just that is a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. 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 It's, oh, God. Yeah. Okay. And we'll get to experience it next year. I can't. Oh, oh, man. Speaking of which, oh, no, Joe. Jonas Vingegaard has left the hospital in Vitoria after 12 days 
after his high-speed crash in the Basque Country. The Tour Time Tour de France winner suffered a fractured collarbone and ribs, pulmonary contusion, and pneumothorax. It's all David talk. With the lung injuries apparently causing his long stay in the hospital, he's, expe- he's expected to return home to Denmark or his new base in Switzerland to continued recovery. Uh, Remco Evenepoel is also involved, and Primoz Roglic was also involved. Um, the th- word is that he could need up to six weeks off the bike to fully recover from these injuries. Hmm. My first question is, um, what are the chances of a return of the Giro Tour double victory? Honestly, Wink, wink. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my neck out on the line here and say that it is like above 90%. <laughs> like the, I said this the last time we talked about this, but the drop-off, not to say that anybody's, you know, a mm-hmm. schmuck. You're all that, winners. Yes. Mm-hmm. However, the drop-off in quality that we're going to see this summer, I think, is going to be drastic. Mm. Shit. It, oh, I, oh. I hope Garrett can kind of give. I mean, because here's the thing is like Tade is going to come full gas into the, the Giro. So I don't really think that Garrett can take that from him. But Garrett's not racing Tade, the tour, though. That's the thing. Yeah. And so that's why like Tade kind of has to like plan for doing both. Mm-hmm. And, and he wants to win at both. So he has to like gauge that. And Garrett Thomas can just throw all of his chips on the table and just try to go for the Giro. The I, only saving grace is the. The Giro this year is not as mountainous as mm-hmm. it has in the past. I don't think they're even hitting the Dolomites this year. Wow. So, Which believe. is why so, Wow was going to go for yeah, it exactly. this year. So, mm. um, you know, without spending all that extra energy and stuff, I think he's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. S- speaking of which, if you were a Visma Lisa bike director at this point in time, other than mm-hmm. um, locking yourself into your home and just rocking back and forth in the <laughs> shower in a fetal position... Uh, what would be your plans for July? Shit, can Mateo ride a Grand Tour? <laughs> That's the only thing that I would yeah. be really banking yeah. on because I, when you look down that line of riders, Sepp. I mean, yeah, you have Sep, mm-hmm. but I think Sep is not. He doesn't really hold a candle. No, I feel he's bad such saying a that. Bad time trial. Yeah, yeah, and it's just he doesn't have any sort of real punch like a lot of these other guys are going to have. So you just hope Mateo can ride a really good kind of flattish Giro if he goes to it, but you yeah. just kind of take this year and build on the next one. Wow. Well, and aren't they losing an SD to a soccer team yeah, this year? they are. Yeah, that's what I thought. So oh, Losing what? DS. A DS, not yeah. SD. Oh, Thank yeah. you. To Direct a soccer sportive. team? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to a Dutch soccer team, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that so a, what? a normal crossover? A lot less no. traveling. <laughs> What's well, he doing for them? Still kind of a lot. He's directing, probably better money. He's uh, directing the yeah. soccer team. Well, yeah. Is he a director? I can't remember. His name is, starts with an M. But it it said it, he, he said a coach. Rob yeah, Hatch he's a did. coach. So he does a lot of coaching for for fitness and stuff for <sighs> the team. Okay. okay. And okay. Wout is one of his. He said that he praised Wout and everything. He says that it was a hard decision, but you got money and. In cycling or soccer, what do you think is more <laughs> lucrative? Yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Man. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, can you blame him? He Golf. said it was a tough, t- uh, you know, a tough choice. But yeah, yeah. Um, is this a lesson to be learned in terms of teams having one to two major invested riders on a team? I'll just give you an example: uh, Remco and Patrick Lefebvre. And I, I Patrick Lefebvre's got a fuck ton of flaws going on right now and and his entire methodology of guilting his riders and and he just sounds like a grumpy asshole well, he sounds dad. like the uh the tinkoff guy yeah oh yeah olaf yeah. Olaf, uh, olaf right mm-hmm. oleg oleg oleg, oleg yeah. Tinkoff. Yeah. he's just he's 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 got an article that he's able to a regular column he's a regular he's providing to belgian press and he's he's just ridiculing his riders but anyway I, I i digress here don't i um talk to me about the this i mean all sports kind of fall into this having one two major stars am i wrong but at least with cycling you usually are able to focus on classics versus grand tours mm-hmm. but with a yumbo visma team you're now looking at we've lost 
our grand tour and we've lost our classics. Yeah. Um, Lefebvre is looking at, he put all his eggs into the basket of a grand tour rider and now he has nothing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you think of, you think of like the great sport teams going on. I just think currently, cause I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> No offense. I'm, I'm really he not... He was going to say La Vie Claire. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, you think of the, the current sport teams that are consistently dominant, and those are the ones that avoid injury consistently. That's super luck. tough. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot luck. of luck, yeah. and it's also very different in terms of the sport because in a lot of cases, like in a football, like Patrick Mahomes, he has not... He's been injured, like, once, seriously, mm-hmm. but he still plays all these all these seasons Messi's the same thing he's been injured I think four or five times in his entire like 20 year career and those are the but they just of, hit it with freezing spray yeah and they also <laughs> train for those moments though you know like Mahomes he, he has a specific like training regimen to put him into yeah. uncomfortable positions yeah but it's super I feel like it's super different when it comes to cycling you can't really compare it because so and so could cause Jonas to crash, you know. Um, but it is really it just comes down to that that big amount of luck, and you also really have to know the type of rider that you have in your team. I mean, if you look at a Tade, when's the last time you really have seen Tade crash? It was in the yeah, knock on wood. But last year at this time, Lee's best on Lee. Yeah, and he broke his wrist. Broke his yeah. wrist. Yeah. Um, but you don't see him on the ground very yeah, often. You just know he's that type of rider that can keep it upright. And like when you put all your baskets into a row glitch, which Bora Hansgrohe did, and now they're kind of facing that a little bit, yeah. you start to see what you get from what you pay for. I think that when it comes to quick step, though, that team needs – he needs to go for that team to succeed. I, uh, yeah. Um, with the and Paul could probably agree with me with the glory that of the Mape years and all those incredible years. I mean, probably even as back back as far as Word Perfect. I mean, I, that mm-hmm. might be that might be too far back, but um, a legend in the sport. But mm-hmm. I, I I think the school of thought has changed. Mm-hmm. All legends lose their edge at one point. I I think with him, take that back. I think he, he was on the verge of retiring. And nothing, yeah. nothing's more important to have another Belgian, um, you know, Tour de France winner. It hasn't been since well, Grand Tour winner was in the Giro back seventy nine or something. Or well, he was something like that. So, Remco won the Volta though. Yeah, but yeah. It, and the Tour. I uh, yeah. mean, the Tour win yeah. is that's true. I forgot about that. But um, uh, you know, for a Tour winner, it's been you know forty, fifty years almost. You yeah. Know, so. Um, I think that he, when he picked up Remco Young, he thought, "This is I'll go out and have, I, you know, I've got the best classic. I've done everything in the classic. He has. Mm-hmm. I mean, taken uh, several times, two times where they took the podium mm-hmm. under his realm, you know, uh, in Paris Roubaix and the Tom so, Bonin era. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, Jan Museo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but right. yeah, you yeah, can yeah, see yeah, that classic that team as as soon as Remco came in became oh, less and less." Successful it changed, and yeah. then he was hard on Alaphilippe, and then that just Alaphilippe was, has been reported to have been riding with a fracture on his kneecap. On his kneecap, yeah, I believe it because he didn't that's, that's want painful, to face no, not at all <laughs> the the ridicule of of Patrick Lefebvre. Did he say that? Did, did I, no, but, no, he did not say that. He would never say that mm. because he's probably terrified. Yeah. <laughs> I just what a. Jesus. Yeah, he needs to go for the sake of the sport too. I mean, this is a a lot of this is a lot of this is speculation. I mean, a lot of us we don't know what's behind the scenes and things like that. Well, you contacted him once, right? I did. What was his response? No. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Enough said. Yeah. 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 There was a while for a long time where I was saying I host a podcast, a very popular cycling podcast, and they'd be like, "Sure." Now it's like pocket pie. Jesus. No, but everybody's got a podcast. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. I'm like, but I've been around since 1999. That's anyway. right, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. they have three kegs? Does everybody else? No, no. Everybody, yeah. Do they no, record live? Do right no. Now. They all no. do this editing thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's real tough. That was stupid. I better <laughs> cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> Fuckheads. <laughs> oh, I should cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's jump. Looking ahead, it's time for the Ardennes with Flesh Malone tomorrow. 
in Liege, best on Liege on Sunday. Um, Paul, in your experience, just I, I throwing you under the bus here. I, I think we talked about it a little bit, but what makes these ones different from our previous classics? Is it just the final climb that changed the dynamic, or is there something else that changes the status of the, of these these final classics of the spring season? No, they're down in the Ardennes of Belgium, so yeah. um, a lot very steep pitching hills. Some of them like uh, could be kilometer to three kilometers long you know you're looking at some gradients at 20 percent and um history has a lot of like stage winners tour de france winners have won those or do well in them um uh so flesh well is is one that uh, goes over the big big one is called the the Cote de Wii. Mm-hmm. and so the the guys do it four times finishing on on the fourth um, and it is it's grueling, but it kind of makes it for boring racing a little bit because everybody waits yeah. to that final final climb. Yeah, final yeah. climb. But it is kind of a, a little bit reminiscent to um, uh, Milan San Remo. Yeah, because that last climb, getting into it and everything, it is crazy. And you see guys about falling over because they just empty themselves up over the top of this climb. So. Um, and then uh, Liège Besson Liège is the oldest classic in the Pro Tour, and it started 1893. I'm just is it, from the hip. So. Is it a monument? It's a monument. Liège is flesh. Yeah, flesh yeah, is not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is famous. One of the famous ones is the Lara Dude and the Côte de Forge, and and those are if if when you watch it and the Lara Dude, you'll see the people. It's like out in the fields and these narrow roads, like typical in Belgium, but. People are standing on the side of the road. You get a sense of how steep it is, and uh, that's where Remco, but he won't this year, is mm-hmm. attacked last year, um, and that's kind of a waste. You, I think they climbed that in the Cote de Forge and another one like tw- uh, twice. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it's. I, gosh, I think. I, I think uh, Merckx has won that five times. I might be wrong. Four. Uh, I think he's yeah. So. We need to spend. It, they they're not as exciting as the Cabo Classics yeah. by any means. Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. it's almost kind of a well, we still got this. Yeah, yeah. and I don't mean to disparage the, you know those races, but it's just it's, okay. I li- I like them. I like them better in stage races still. <laughs> to the zero, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. What's what early May? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Let's take a look at the races, um, both women's and men's. And I do want to mention, before we all go to our, our rosters here, um, the women's ride at the Amstel Gold race, the women's race, which was um, the victory salute uh, seen and heard around the world. Uh, Lorena, we was uh, making the mistake that we can all probably relate to, and, and we've seen happen in all Pelotons. Mm-hmm. The early celebration that led to Mariana Voss perfectly timed bike throw mm-hmm. taking the victory in Amstel Gold Race. Um, has anybody done something like this in, no. in your career? Nope. You have nope. to win first. Yeah, or yeah. <laughs> how about how about bringing it in terms of a similar kind of a bonehead move? For example, my bonehead move uh, was strictly mechanically. I remember uh, not uh, gluing a tire on the night before a race. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember that That's specifically. Bold. Yeah, <laughs> I remember a moment where um, I was with a rider who we had lapped the field, and I attacked that rider, and the rider used his teammates mm-hmm. to catch up and win the race. That was a dumb move on my part, um, and I thought it was against <clears throat> the rules, but I guess I was wrong. I think that when you lap against the yeah. rules, no, 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 there's a certain not, point yeah. that you can actually do that. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that's a U.S. rule mm-hmm. Is it? that you can use in a crit. Mates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? I, I can't. Rem- I willing I to just... fess up to being a dipshit. Sorry, Lorena. You know, I mean, a brilliantly done sprint, but she posted on social that she felt like an idiot sandwich. So yeah. And well, she I, she shed a lot of tears afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame her for. Well, there, that there's way. one thing she probably would have got away with it when I'm watching the sprint. Because she was up against the barriers and took off. She veered right and opened the door mm-hmm. for Mariana, Mariana Voss. Had she just kept that line, I don't know why she veered off. Yeah. And that just opened the door, and Voss just like, huh? And she looked to her right. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I won my national 
Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there was a couple of errors there for her. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't I've never understood this because for me, it's like, what's, why are you celebrating across, across the line and then throw your hands up? Like, well, I mean, it's, cool. and it looks cool after the, you, you see the like whole a poster and everything. Shit afterwards. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's yeah. just like, I've never, I always finish the job line and then I would celebrate. How many yeah. times do you celebrate? Oh, like <laughs> once. <laughs> it was for a sign sprint, I think. Uh, but it was after the but sign. I got that sign. <laughs> I I don't. I've never celebrated really. I've been. I've had wins where I, they're not even in sight, and I still stay puppy pod across the line. I'm like as arrow as possible. Like I don't care. What happens? Well, I'm winning by as much as freaking possible, and then I'll sit up. You gotta admit, when at our level, a lot of times when you're putting your when you're posting up and your hands are in the air, it's kind you're of, on a desert country road in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and just it's like the going, officials are there posting up yeah. for. Yeah, there's no cameras. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. but you know a downtown crit or something like that. You know, Jack, I'm talking to you. You know, like Boise when he won Boise Twilight. Mm-hmm. You know, that probably was like a boom, boom, boom. You know, or yeah. something like that. Or Jackson, your pose on the website is is freaking awesome. I love that one. And there were people there, but most of the time, if it's a road yeah. race, are you are yeah. you in a post up? No, yeah. no. Yeah. You're just gonna be like, I might, I might Hi. do like a fist pump. Like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I got it. Hi. Yeah. I mean, when it's come yeah. to the crits that I've had, it's just been like. I've looked, I make sure like three times yeah. before that there's like more than a bike length. If yeah. not, I'm going the whole way. Yeah. Oh, that's just, that hurts. Mm. That hurts. Okay, let's look at the races. Uh, the women's splash. I have to always do that every year. A flash. Flash. Flash for fantasy. Um, I am going with uh, Lisa Lungo Borghini, Cassie Niwi Adoma. And I'm going off the grid a little bit. Fem Van Empel. Uh, I am going with, I think this is kind of made for her. I think it's Demi Vollering. Uh, yeah. Lada Capecchi, who I don't think will. Uh, well, you never know. I don't think she'll win this one. And then uh, Marta Cavalli mm. from FDJ Suez. Demi Vollering, Lada Capecchi, and then Fem Van Empel. Nice and good. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Look like at you rolling your eyes. They're American. <laughs> <laughs> I have Vollering Brand. Oh, a- and brand. Uh, Nia, Nia Doma. David, do you want to bother? Mm, that's so cool. I circled Vollering, and I got Good. nowhere else. There you go. Okay. Work. Flesh Men's. Uh, I am. I'm. I. I was playing around with this. I. I of course picked Thomas Pitcock because uh, Pitcock's been riding really well, and he had a good. He had a good am still. Um, I don't know about his climbing, and this is flesh. I'm going earlier in the week, so I'm I kind of play it. Around. You got to think, you might not have the same person in both. So I'm going Pidcock, I'm going Brandon McNulty, and I'm going Richard Carapaz. I am go also going to go with Tom Pidcock because he is actually a pretty good climber. Yeah, and he's coming into his, he's he's timing it why right right. Um, and that's why I think he made the race on this last weekend the way he did. Yeah. Um, I also am choosing Mateus Skelmosa. Yeah. Uh, and who has come into really good form lately? Dylan Toons. Hmm. Thomas Pidcock. I, I really just, yeah, he's going to win. Um, and then I'm going to just throw in two others. Mark Hirschi and Cheese Minute. Oh. The podium. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, Hershey also, Skilmoza, and I have David Gadu. Oh, okay. Ooh, been up there on this race yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I'm kind of getting good at this because I <laughs> thought about David Gadu, <laughs> uh, but I went with Pitcock. Uh, I went with Carapaz, and then uh, Tom Skunins. Okay, Th- those are those are good. I'd love to see Tom's get it. Yeah, yeah. Liege best only Liege. We have very redacted. Uh, yeah. uh, reduce women startless both men and women yeah they're both pr- pretty much hurting yeah. I have Cassie Niwe Doma just because I think she's awesome uh, at least Lungo Bergini because I think she's awesome and Demi Vollering because duh yeah I chose uh, Lada Capecchi Demi Vollering and Cassie Niwe Doma yep 
Vlada Kopecky, Demi Volering, and Elisa. Wait, is that exactly what you just said? It'll be. Yep. No, that's no, what I, I said. No, I chose Cassie oh. and you were doing. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. I have the same. Yep. Yeah, yeah, totally me too. <laughs> <laughs> David knows bikes. Yeah. Uh, dudes for Liege, Matthew Vanderpool, Ben Healy, and Michael Matthews. What? Wow, that's wild. What? I'm playing around, man. I'm dancing. Um, I also <laughs> picked... Uh, no, I did not pick the main guy. Yeah, yeah. well, I did. Um, I picked Matthew Vanderpool, um, who did not show up this last weekend. Surprise, surprise. I was really kind of shocked by that. Um, Mateus Skermosa again. And the guy who's definitely going to win this is today, Pogacar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today's going to win it. But I'm going to just because I mean, Nielsen, I was right on Mateo becoming a superstar, and Nielsen is up next. Uh, and Thomas Pidcock, he's going to sweep it. If Tade doesn't win it, and Tade's going to win it. That would be the first time that somebody won. Both? All three. Because they, are, they consider it are they? Oh, I see. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amstel. Amstel and stuff. What a weak beer drinker that guy is. Mm. Did you see Tiz? Yeah, Tiz just took it. Tiz, yeah, five seconds. Yeah. Who's the weak beer drinker? Pickock. Uh, um, Pickock. He, he, he couldn't even get one swallow down. Oh, come yeah. on. I know. You had I, two that's why jobs. I never, one is ever pick him again. Ever. Bastard. God. So what I picked was um, I picked uh, Tade, without a doubt. Uh, and then I went with Tiz because I've, I like that guy, but he probably won't win. And Kostafora. Okay. Mm. I didn't know that uh, Tade was on this list until you guys just said I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had picked uh, Vanderpool Palace and Bonneau. That's not bad. Mm-mm. That's not I bad. I see what I'm saying. I'm kind of all right at this. Pattern recognition. I I did go to med school. I tell you, <laughs> if, yeah. if if Matthew wins Liege, can you imagine winning three oh monuments? My God. I don't think Marx has done that. So and and I wonder a little Same bit season. against uh, Amstel Gold that He's he just himself. like throttled back a little bit. I'm excited to see a reignition of the battle between Mathieu and Tade. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be good. I do think that one's got a better bit that, of climbing legs. Yeah. Than and that uh, that'll probably on the liar dude on the yeah. second time around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I just think that Mathieu has had a huge season so far. Like. Yeah, and it's today is not. Uh, today is not. So, anyway. All right, I had a topic, but there isn't time for it. So I'm going to just jump straight into our segments for tonight. Uh, supported by our friends at the Pro's Closet, a vast array of gear full bikes that I'll gently use. You trick just anybody into thinking you're a dentist, or at least on a dentist budget. Be sure to use the Lincoln Pack Filler as it helps us stay hydrated. God, I timed that just nicely. Mm-hmm. He's got to go pee. Dave's got to go first. Pee? <laughs> what? what? Yeah. Do you have to go pee? You're standing there looking at me like going, oh, what? You're you're that guy who's <laughs> pass out drunk who's just like going, what? <laughs> what? No, I'm not going to pick you first. You can go pee. <laughs> <laughs> Have we tested for brain? <laughs> kind of oh, no, we do need to do probably a concussion protocol. screening. Yeah, I, know. I think yeah. he, he bonked his head a little hard. Bonked his noggin. Yeah. Yeah. You know you're going to miss some shows. and He's going to be all on his own. <laughs> it's going to be ugly. He won't Who's going to feed him? I don't know. Gonna <laughs> give him water. Wait, I, I, just, I just assume you're just like, like a the, mama the, bird who's just yeah. regurgitating up like, this is what's going to happen tonight. It was like, I think it was the E3 week. Uh, we like... I went over on Saturday morning. I'm like, we need to catch up on bike racing, David. <laughs> I made him watch it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I sh- I should we should we we'll start? Yeah. All right, it's time for Fit Tips. Oh, there you fits. go. There's your bumper. I love it. With Bike Fit Sam brought to us by our friends at Ambassador Cycling. Get fit to get fit. Nice. Sam, we were talking, and and you sent me uh, the link the link to a listener question talking about. Um, saddles and um, first of all saddles and adjusting and things like that Jackson just went through it himself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and had to come back to you Mm -hmm. Um, and then I also want to ask you ask you about bike to bike and and being able to I mean this is something that not to pick on somebody I know who's constantly coming to you almost on an addictive basis Mm -hmm. (laughs) but but 
with everything you've got to do, I mean, is it a constant, holy shit, can I trust myself with this? Mm-hmm. So talk to me about saddles, talk to me about different bikes. I mean, that's a gigantic encyclopedia yeah. of things you got to reveal. I, I think that, like, what I would brush on is, like, I think in the last year, as I, I mean, like, I'm always in continuing learning. Like, it's, you think that you have something figured out, and then you're like, oh, yeah, that doesn't actually work. And really? for me personally, like, I thought, okay, well, I could probably just do fits on people that, you know, necessarily don't have bikes and then give them their numbers and they can translate that to their new stuff. And I'll circle back to like the, how the listener relates to this is, you know, it's, it's one of those things that unless a person has a good understanding of like engineering or mechanical mind, you know, some like architect, they understand geometry, right? Like you can't just give those numbers to anybody and trust that they're going to relay that onto each bike <laughs> accurately. Yeah. Um, and, and then there's also just fit differences. Like back to the saddle part is this listener had like thrown on a different saddle. I had fit them previously and then all of a sudden their knee pain returns and they're like, well, what's going on? And they realized dawned on them like, Oh, I should check what, you know, if the stack height of that seat was different from rails to, and sure enough, it was, they had to, you know, adjust their seat height. Um, so there's all of those complex pieces that, uh, always need to be changed. And like, for instance, Jackson's another great example, like got a new saddle. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that those saddles are actually pretty close for the length of the saddle. So you could almost keep the same fore and aft, keep the same, you know, like height on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't know. I mean, how confident would you feel that you could just take another saddle and throw it on and keep your fit pretty close from what we've done now? Yeah. I mean, because like that last one started off with like, it was just the saddle. And then because your sit bones were more like you were more relaxed, Mm -hmm. you know, your back folded entirely differently on the bike. Yeah. It's a different riding experience than the other saddles I've, I've had. So I don't think I could throw anything else on there and just be the same. Right. And it's just like one of those things that it's, it's just hard because that affects so many other layers of a bike fit. Right. And so it's, it's the same thing, blow it out to any part on a bike handlebars, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like your internal rotation of your shoulders may be different and you know, you may be more relaxed it's like, there's just all these complex things. So how I'd wrap it up is like, if you get new parts, you know, yeah, you can try to keep those same fit numbers that if I fit you or another fit or has done that. You yeah. can try to keep those same numbers on there, but you likely are going to need to circle back. And that's why you should go to a fitter that has those policies where, like, for instance, with me, if you get a bike fit for me, it's, you know, your first normal cash pay. And then the next one is half that price. And so they should be kind of structured like that so that, you know, you can go back and have small tweaks as you would adapt yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And get older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I recommend every like three to five years. If you haven't done anything to your bike and it's just you've continued riding, like three to five years, your body's probably changed or a major incident. Mm. Quick question. How long have you been fitting bikes for? Oh, great question. Probably uh God, the brother. Twelve years. <laughs> mm. It's so funny. I just I just don't remember. I don't remember. Have I ever had a bike? Oh, yeah, I dude, yeah. that's not how this works. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Everybody know there I am his pictures brother. on I my should've... website of him getting a bike fit. I've had like four since There's I've known it. Photos. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I didn't use those numbers. It's <laughs> <laughs> not my fault. This is a guy who <laughs> fell off his bike three times yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do. Uh, I do yeah. your bike fit, and then you go and you slam on a zero offset seat post and put it wherever you want. And you decide, oh, I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus. Well. <laughs> Yes. All right, let's let, uh, let's keep the brother, show rolling. Brother, brothers will bicker. Might as well go to it, you know. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, <laughs> a little bit of uh, Ask Doctor David. Did you hear that knocking? Yes, you know when I asshole met, when, <laughs> when I'm at the clinic, I knock on every door I walk through. Do you really? On accident. I don't even, it's just a habit. I walk into the MA's office, knock, knock, knock. I walk through a door from my office <laughs> to the main room. I knock on the way out of my office. <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> it's just a habit. Sorry, like, guys, I'm coming into the hall. And then the people on the other side, I, I look at them, I'm like, I don't know, I did that. And I just keep going. <laughs> there goes Waffles. <laughs> knocking on every door. <laughs> you call him Dr. Wobbles. That's really you, funny. Um, there was this discussion about saddle source. And a saddle source is an ongoing, holy shit, type of a topic. You know, oh, yeah. Number one, ew. Number two, 
how long have you been wearing your chamois? Number three, <laughs> don't wear it on the podium. That's gross. And number four, when they get to the point of severity, that it uh, a little rest and a you know a f- couple forefingers and popping the blister ain't gonna <laughs> cut it. <laughs> right, right, right. Hot needle. Oh, right in the eye. Oh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, man. I love you, squirter. honey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, make sure you heat up your needle first. You know? yeah, no, I'm just kidding. That's not my advice. Uh, That's not my advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was reminded of this because we talked about it previously, and I think you know my message by and large is that like these happen, they usually become nothing, especially because most people who ride bikes are relatively healthy, healthy immune system. Like you can deal with these things without uh, like a significant amount of medical attention. Most people don't need antibiotics or an IND, like incision and drainage. Most people don't need that. Um, and I, but recently I saw somebody, wasn't even my own patient. They came into the office. Uh, the complaint on the thing said like mass on nut or something. Like literally that's what they wrote in the chart. And I was like, mm-hmm. wow, okay, they a, write that shit on charts like nut. They, write they just nut? write whatever the person complains of. And yeah, whatever what the it, patient says. And so I'm like, I don't they don't really, use like technical terms like mass on tectic, on, testicle, on testicle well, or they just, ma- mass on taint. It's the well. That's a, if they knew what or where that's that a medical was. Term. Yeah, <laughs> I hear they're calling it gooch now. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that's the new medical term. That's <laughs> world. But like it's Greek, gross <laughs> gooch. Yeah, I, I see this and I'm genuinely concerned because I'm like, oh man, shouldn't be any masses on the nut. Uh, that's not good. Like that's what they're complaining of. And I go in the room and they tell me all about it. Yada yada yada. And this guy like doesn't mention anything about how he rides bikes. And I'm like, well, all right, you can talk all you want, but we just need to take a look because I'm not going to know what it is until Drop. I see. Yep, drops his drawers. I take a look. I'm like, bro, it's a saddle sore. Like I've seen, I get these like once to, you know, once every three months or something like yeah. that. Like there's a saddle sore. I never had one. I have a question. Is there a difference between a saddle sore and then a pressure sore? Yeah, a pressure sore should have like skin breakdown. Pressure sores have skin breakdown and like erosion of the of the protective layer of the skin. A, a uh, saddle sore is it's an, an, it's an abscess. Yeah, it's, it's like cool. zit on your junk, right? It's a zit on your junk. It's in your taint. It's on your over your sit bones. So like breakdown of the skin where you can see like erythema or like bleeding that sort of thing. That's more of a sore situation. Oh, erythema. Don't know what erythema is. I, I used Red, to worship erythema back skin. in my days in the Greco-Roman <laughs> the, era. Yeah, it was the goddess of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Spe- oh, you're speaking to a bunch of idiots. Uh, <laughs> that show is going to be called Medical. Oh Mighty Aerothema. Aerothema, something of the sort. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to spell it wrong, too. Yeah, you're going to so, spell it. Yeah. A E R O. So this, T-H-E-R-O. you know, I I saw this guy. He was like, you know, it has been there since I was riding this fall, and this was only a few months ago. So he had it all winter long. Because again, most people, nothing bad happens. They sit there. You leave it alone, you know, basic hygiene, that sort of thing. Take a shower, and it goes away. Um, maybe you pop it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you, like, get down there and try to pop it. No. But with your teeth or anything. Yeah, else. definitely not with your teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, well, because also, with real a, talk, I can push it um, inwards if you, like, mm-hmm. are messing around with doing, you know, trying to pop a zit. Like, you can make, can, Yeah, you can make it worse. You can make it more inflamed by, like, pushing on it breaking wow. like because it's generally encapsulated and you can break that open and make it worse um but uh so he his was growing slightly and so we made the decision to give him some antibiotics and i gave him very close like hey this is what you do if things get worse situation because that's in medicine we're just very cautious and i was like eh, it won't be a problem this will take care of it but like three days later he got febrile he started fevering and he was shaking and he was weak and he actually ended up in the er uh with a systemic infection from it um because it kept growing despite the antibiotic we gave him and he had to have a um he had to have a uh urologist come in and drain it because not a lot of people will cut in your perineum because there's a lot of things going on Mm -hmm. there so he had he had to have a urologist come in drain it give him different antibiotics and You know, the thing I wanted to reiterate is that it's not always benign. You need to like, yes, they will mostly go away. But if you start getting systemic symptoms, fever, you're weak, you're having chills, you really need to go be seen probably in an emergency room or in urgent care because it's a that's a high risk area. You don't want you don't want you don't want trouble down there. 
Even yeah. concussed, he actually is able to talk. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that also depends on how long you've been married. I oh, <laughs> I mean, no matter how long you've been married, you don't want it to fall off, right? Yeah. yeah, true. You know, I had which one solve in. a lot of problems. It might make your position a little bit more yeah, aggressive. Yeah, be more wow. arrow. Wow. Sam yeah. might be able to fit you better. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had a pressure stack. point that started getting like. Cavernous, you know, like a big deep hole. Whoa! And mm-hmm. a doctor look at it, and he says, "That's bad. That's bad." And I said, "Doctor, you didn't have to say it twice." He goes, "I didn't." I <laughs> <laughs> used to have. It's that. an echo. Like, it's an echo. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> oh, so we're so full of these. Why? Let's let's jump to style points with Jackson. Um, and, and see what's going on with Jackson here in the world of style in terms of fashion, in terms of things that are going on. All right. Um, I wanted to talk about shoes, shoes, shoes this week. Um, shoes. Uh, so what's everybody's favorite brand of shoes? Oh, it's perfect timing because Paul just grabbed a new pair. Yeah. Sam says specialize. So I had an interesting thing God, about specialize. You just, you dirty, dirty. Shoes and helmet oh. specialized. Well, Specialized is really interesting because don't they have an offset? Yeah, they have a various 1.5 wedge. So does that work for everybody, though? <laughs> it you does, just went so total most, nerd. You should have said that yeah, with a little sort of... Yeah, he's hey, got he's a little, 1. Little, 5 wedge. Well, uh, see, the thing wedge. is, I knew yeah, about that, it's too. It's so sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they can totally were, check it out. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> should wear those. Specialized. Yes. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> so they were the first ones in the market with that design uh, by BG Fit, but actually most shoe companies do that now. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because I've heard that they only work for certain types of people. Yeah. No. Those like that is it's maybe not to that degree, but um, maybe, maybe one degree. But all shoes have kind of if you look at them, the um, underneath the ball of your foot is more built up. Okay. On Interesting. All shoes from like. 2010, 12 on. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Paul? CD. Yeah. <laughs> CD. Yeah. It was hard to get. I mean, I ha- I explained on Sunday that mm-hmm. I had a pair of CDs that were at their top of the line back five, six years ago. The genius. And they never did. No. No. Oh. They were called something else. They had a hill cup adjustment and everything. And just the material. It was, it was the cruel shoes. I mean, I had bruised toenails and I'm like, I, this is, you know. So I went back to the Genius 10, mm. and they feel like slippers. I love okay. them. They're just exactly the same as they were in 1991 when I bought my first pair. A part of this question is why as well. So that, it is, that, it, that very much gave yeah, it, yeah. It is just mainly my feet have to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. David? Uh, it specializes as well, but I just want to say my current pair of shoes are seven or eight years old, and I want new ones, but like I need them to fail. You know what I mean? And like that says a lot to me that like, yeah. like yeah. and the new specialized are four hundred dollars. Thousands of miles. But I will I will pay that because I'm I've gotten seven or eight years out of these shoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thousands of miles. And they're still comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I you can know. honestly like it. I have actually like worn them out like David did, uh previous pairs. And I just put in new insoles after six years or so. Yeah. And they yeah. fit great. Yeah. I read I put I have insoles put beds in mm-hmm. all of my shoes mm-hmm. and that changes the game yep. yeah. Yeah. i can ride almost any shoe mm-hmm. um uh i was a i was a cd guy for so long actually i rode i've never mind i've ridden a ton of different shoes but i went into a cd mode and then um i i shifted i i actually carson good buddy of the show the diva himself uh, gave me some giant shoes and i love them I, they're great shoes, and they they were the first boa shoes I've ever ridden. But I will say this: um, the lace up Giro's Empires that I had oh, yeah. were some of the most comfortable fitting shoes I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have I love the performance of the Giants. They they do everything I need them to do. They 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 work great. They don't hurt. I have no pressure points. Mm-hmm. But I have yet to be able to slide into that almost like a slipper shoe and just be like, okay. I haven't I haven't found Oasis yet. Nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm riding Giro's. I really like them. I crashed in them, and they didn't change my foot at all. So yeah. I've really enjoyed what I've what I've stuck with. Um, 
color wise i like white i find that it's really interesting that it did kind of go from like a dark color like what paul's recently picked up to now everybody rides white i do kind of like the other colors though like um Stu, who we rode with this weekend mm-hmm. kind of has like an iridescent a little mm-hmm. bit which is kind of cool um but what do you prefer when it comes to color white or some kind of there's like some cool funky you know colors out there that i think would be fun for gravel but for mm-hmm. road white yeah for my gravel shoes mine are blue Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Dan, I, if Dan I had, had blue ones on this week. He did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I had a choice, I would have had white instead of black. But. Yeah. Yeah, white for sure, especially like the hot feet thing. I think white shoes in the summer are ideal. Um, I have forest green on for mountain, and I like those too. But like on the road, to me, white shoes are bust. Mm, okay. I don't care. Yeah. What? Didn't you have like orange ones, or is that just your bike? No, just my bike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's where you had orange shoes. Um, That's a very orange bike. It is a very <laughs> orange bike. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is a very orange bike. And I love that about mm-hmm. that bike. Um, I've always, I've, you know, I sometimes I'll watch a pro race and I'll see all the white shoes. And I'm like, screw that. Sure. I'm going back to black shoes. Or I'm going I'm going to go something different or something like that. I don't yeah. know why. But, uh, yeah, I care, but I don't care. And then sometimes I think I don't care because I'm cool, but I'm mm. not. Yeah. So, in other words... Welcome to my psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice in here. Um, yeah, it is. There's so, plenty of beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what drowns it away. Something I think Sorry, goes Jeff. along with it. We talked about this a little earlier, so I might not need to ask the question, but uh, certain socks to pair with your shoes is very interesting. Mm-hmm. What people choose to do and what teams choose to do as well, I find really interesting. Like Ineos a couple of years ago, they had an all dark kit and then their socks were white. Yeah. Which is just, it's so interesting because everybody yeah. rides white shoes. But I just, I do find that a white sock, like Sam said earlier tonight, that it lo- it just, it kind of meshes a little bit better. I'm really interested to see with our new kit, the green, how it goes with all of our sh- different shades of shoes. Um, but something that you brought up, my father, is um, <laughs> other surfaces we're starting to see. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We're starting yeah. to see a lot more pros ride in road shoes. Uh, don't quote me on this. Gravel, yeah. Yeah. Or did I say road? No. Oh. For gravel racing, they're wearing yeah. Yeah. a lot of uh, Or yeah. even mountain bike. Yeah. I was Leadville. Gonna say, yeah. yeah, I was going to say Keegan Swenson this year rode Leadville on a pair of road shoes. Um, and it's, it's just interesting to see. The shift now, you start to see it's more efficient. The sole's stiffer. People aren't really walking as much as they used mm-hmm. to. Keegan didn't walk that whole time. Yeah. He didn't even get off. So it's just, it's a really interesting shift that we're starting to see in terms of what footwear is chosen. And also, I will say we're really starting to see a lot of shoes change to more of like a road type of mountain shoe. Specialized, for instance, not specialized, uh, uh, Shimano. Mm -hmm. Their off-road shoe is very, it's super stiff, but the traction is not as big as like a zero would be. It's definitely a lot more of like a roady mountain shoe. Mm. It's interesting. I don't know. Just an interesting part of our sport. I watched the the World Cup mountain bike races this weekend, which were brilliant, by the way. Uh, if you have an HBO Max subscription, mm-hmm. it's on BR Sports. Sorry, Paul, you can just <laughs> not pay attention to me. Um, and the, the World Cup short track and cross-country races were absolutely brilliant. They were really good racing. It, it kind of had a feel. It does have a feel of an extended cross-country. I mean, an extended uh, uh, cyclocross feel to it. And it, it the community the environment is like that but i was watching these guys and they did have to dismount in, yeah. in some six they've got situations. a lot of gnarlier shoes than yeah like a cross rider but does. i wonder if they they don't allow them the stiff the the flexibility of a standard mountain bike shoe Probably i would not. wonder that they're just like no I'll keep them keep them as stiff as mm-hmm. a two by four underneath my foot so mm-hmm. yeah uh, um shoes are awesome they are they're exciting i love them they cost a hell of a lot now, but they're yeah, the best. That's a good investment. Yeah. 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 Feet, I wear. Mm-hmm. Feet, I wear, and helmets. You know, yeah. right? Paul, you got something for us? Yeah, but if we're running along, I can save it. I guess we're doing it. Change of times with Paul yeah. Main. Change of times with Paul Main. Oh, God, that almost sounded like Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how things have Squint shifted and things are better. And things are better. Come on, man. They're better. Well, I think it, uh, it, what made me bad think Joe about Biden. this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really bad Joe Biden. 
uh, what I think I thought it was good. Thanks, man. Saying, Thanks. Right. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, Liar. Was we, we talked about crashes and stuff, and one of the things that uh, I started thinking back with uh, um, Matthews and uh, uh, Philippe Gilbert and these oh, guys wow. with the interview. Yeah. These guys are saying what's so different about cycling now is that um, the youth coming, the youths are coming in. <laughs> And there's no control early on on the races, and it becomes very dangerous. And, you know, for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about, and every podcast is talking about the crashes and the amount of crashes. Yeah. And that's yeah. one element I don't think anybody's touched, is that there was a sense of control. The El Patron, the guy that led, said, no, you will not. You know, you can't do this. And people are getting, you know, these 18, 19-year-olds, not that there's anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're getting in there, and they... You know they're extremely talented athletically, and they crank out power. And we have uh, Zwift riders that never raced in the peloton. And when you see how wide those roads are over in Europe, and you're you got a bunch of people, it's like putting Cat Four, strong Cat Fours, in a Cat One Two race. That's yeah. just my take on or it. Or a World and, and Tour think, race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, just to keep it to you know like yeah. relative for us, but I think that is maybe more of an issue and and then i heard a statistic that majority of the racers that were interviewed about the crashes they said probably majority of the races uh, the crashes in the races are caused by by cyclists themselves not not the road furniture not the equipment not whatever and i think there might be being a crusty old man some some of that old style racing that probably should start coming back a little bit and having some people like back off. This is not mm. the time. Um, you don't attack on a rainy descent. Yeah. You know, with forty people at sixty miles an hour. So, wow. Um, I think that's a perspective that I didn't hear too much, or maybe I. No, you know, I haven't I heard it that, at yeah. all. And it's a. It's actually what the world needs now <laughs> is assholes, sweet assholes. <laughs> It does. It needs some people to just go, hey, listen, fucker. You can't do that. Yeah. 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 So, I, I, you know, it comes to mind is that young kid. Skibbity in, this, you little punk. <laughs> in Flanders last year. Remember that kid that took the bike path and went right into a puddle? Yeah. And swept yeah. Out? I mean, that stuff would have. Uh, Wouldn't have floated. No, no. Yeah. Bernardino would have pulled aside and beat the living <laughs> shit out of <laughs> yeah. it. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah literally. Yeah. 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 So, You'd be dead. That's it. Okay, I like that. You guys, thanks for your segments. We're all Thank done. Thank you. Right? We all, got them all. all done. All right, you guys ready for the final K before we finish the show? <gasps> and it has to be finished before the end of the uh, the, the trailer, the outro, because I keep forgetting to play the outro. But here we're going to go with the outro. Should I go with the 119 or the 104? What's the one that's kind of... Well, 119 is this, this one. This one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the question is, what in your opinion gentlemen is the most underappreciated piece of your equipment kit or equipment jackson most underappreciated kit piece of kit like that i think personally yes oh i think the most underappreciated piece of kit is probably my gloves jackson took a long time Same. k edge got like my mount my oh your mount on the bars yeah yeah, yeah 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 mm. tires tires handlebars I'm going to pull off an earlier reference. I'm going to go with footbeds. Yeah. Footbeds in my shoes. A huge difference that have done a ton for me. So uh, let us know what yours is at home. Hey, everybody. Thank you. First of all, thanks, you guys, for being here. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Sam, goodbye forever. <laughs> You're off the show. Yeah. Good riddance. It's been nice knowing you guys. Mom doesn't love you. Sure yeah, mom doesn't love you. You, <laughs> you drink any beer. You which is, uh, exactly. I break so. with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and for you listening, wherever you might be listening, thanks so much. Like, subscribe, tell a friend, give us a rating on iTunes, and please subscribe to us on YouTube and um, any other place you can find your podcasts. Guys, we'll catch you next week. Sweet. Later. Oh, great times. Ooh.